God who says my life. You know, God do miraculous things in our life. And I thank God for Brother Ashton for writing me this song, a new thing. And we're going to present it to you today. So y'all pray for it.
Well, he put it on my heart this morning to tell you, to encourage you, to be glad to be different. Let me say that again. Amen. Be glad you are different. Okay. That was okay. Come on, be glad. Tell your neighbor. Be glad. Be glad. And I want to speak to those of you who try to fit in. Come on, not and some of you try to force yourself in to be like somebody else other than yourself. Amen. So I want to encourage you and open your love, your eyes today on Psalms 139, verse 14. It says, I praise you. Come on, because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Come on, glory to God. Your works are wonderful, and I know that. Full well, amen. Now I was looking at the word different, and the word different it has how many of you know how to spell different? Anybody in here? Come on, let's spell it together. And I'm wondering if you you see this. The word different is spelled what? D I and what? F F. Say it again, F, F, and what? Oh, praise God. Give your hand. Give yourself a hand. Being able to spell so well, amen? But you know, um, the two Fs stood out to me yesterday as the Lord was ministering to my heart. First, he gave me, I found two quarters. And then I found two dimes, and then I found two pennies. Amen. All day long, he was ministering to me about two, the number two. And so I started looking at, he began to reveal to me the word, the first F is fearfully. Somebody say fearfully. Fearfully. And I want you to understand that there is nothing in your life that you need to change. Because you have been fearfully made by great and awesome. Oh. Woo, Jesus. And I want you to understand that there is nobody on this earth like you. There is nobody else that will come after you. Oh, glory to God. Somebody need to praise God. You have been made in such an amazing way. I mean, crafted and skillfully made by the hand of God. Hallelujah. Anybody know anything about manufacturing? Yes. Well, you can press the number. You can press the size you want. Come on, glory to God. He didn't make me like that. Come on, he didn't make your neighbor like that, your sister, your brother like that. He took his time and made you just right. Come on, glory to God. And then I began to look at how he has made man, come on, and woman, male and female. Look at how powerful our God is. He put a seed inside of man, a life seed. And that seed was given to the female 
to reproduce more life. Come on, glory to God. An amazing God. I just want you to know that you can't be anything but what he has designed you to be. Praise God. And then that second F stands out because God began to reveal to me that once you understand that you are fearfully made by God, then there's freedom for you. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, praise God. There's a freedom, which means I don't have to be like somebody else. I don't have to be like my mom, my dad, my cousins. Come on, brothers, sisters. I can relax in who I am. And there is a freedom in you being you and you loving you. Amen. Come on, praise the Lord. As I take my seat, I want you to start loving you some you. So many times I was talking to someone this week and they were wrestling with self-esteem and confidence, weight, all kinds of stuff. And she finally said, you know what? I realize I really have not been loving myself. And I think a lot of times we do that. We're so busy taking care of everybody else and never take out the time to take care of yourself. Amen. 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 Today, I want to encourage you. Start loving you some of you. Start resting. Start eating right, exercising. Start loving you some of you. Amen. You don't have to reach up to nobody's family. You're just good and perfect right where you are. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Come on, somebody ought to give God some praise for creating you the way you are. Come on, somebody need to just thank God. Lord, I thank you for my feet. I thank you for my hands. I thank you for my hair. I thank you, Lord, God, for my
God for this. I take this, lead us into a place of worship and praise this morning. Thank God you see something today. That beautiful song, Ash Rose. I give credit to the other Ashton. Who just the <laughs> These are two awesome young men who just, you know, have been at the age where they are. They're here every Sunday. They're here um, practicing. They're here serving. Amen. And they help you to get into the place where you need to be. So I just appreciate each and every one of you for what you're doing. Come on, bless the Lord one more good time. Let's pray again. Well, you read it from the word this morning. Yes. Yes. Pastor Diane, when she comes up, she has blessed us so much that sometimes when she gets through, like, you know what, let's just go home and just give a bit of extra. Let's just go home and go home. Amen. 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 She said, Love me some me. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and say, I love me. I love some me. Some me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right. So, uh, don't y'all leave out of me. Just because she finished up the word again, give me just a few minutes of your time. And I've been working, preparing this word. You need to hang in just a few more minutes. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. Uh, my son, Trey, introduced me to this uh, man named Myron Golden. He's an author and a public speaker. He goes around the United States and he talks to uh, people about gaining wealth. He himself is a multimillionaire. What? So it's not me on how to be a millionaire today. And that's not the message. Praise God. But but there was a concept that he used that just stood out to me. And he was saying that um that he teaches a principle called the the history and the mystery of wealth. And what he says in this concept is that you cannot solve the mystery of wealth until you understand the history of wealth. And as he goes on, he began to talk about the history of, uh, of wealth in, in the world, not just the United States, but throughout the world. And he was just saying that from the beginning of time, going all the way back to the garden, from the beginning of time, all the way until the year 1750, that economics was decided by agriculture, uh, who owned the land, owned the wealth. Uh, so those who were landowners and they were able to harvest the land or they were able to, to plant seeds and to bring in a harvest for them, they are the ones who had gained the wealth. And what they would do is they would allow peasants to live on the land and, and they would work the land for them. And when they worked the land, they would bring in the harvest, but the harvest was not just for them, it was for, for the wealthy owner, the, the landlord of that time. And this went on from thousands of years until around 1750. In 1750, that was a switch, that was a, a shift, if I said shift. Yeah. And shift, what began to happen is that wealth began to change from agriculture over to the industrial age. They began to create machines to do what man was doing and to do it even faster. This is when they came out with the cotton gin, uh, the railroad, factories at this time were designed, assembly lines were designed during this period of time. In the state they were for a period of time. So if you had the machines, then you was the person who was going to have wealth. But around 1950, there was another shift. If I say shift, yeah. this shift lasted from 1950 to 1978, and we moved from the industrial age into the distribution age because of the fact that wealth was being created so fast through, uh, through the industrial age. But then they had to find a way to get this product out to the consumer, the customer, and so it began to bring about outlets. This is when malls began to pop up all over the place. Infomercial began to take place. And then, now it begins to be that if you own those things, or if you can start your little store, a little store, you can gain wealth that particular way. And that lasts until about 1978. And it still goes on, but this is where the majority of the wealth was, being, being, uh, was coming from. Then in 1978, there was another shift. And that shift lasts from 1978 to 1994, and it was a technology age. So in 1978, we began to see that computers always existed, but computers was this big thing that was up against the wall, but now you begin to have where you can bring home a computer. Right. Right. And so people like Bill Gates yeah. and Steve Jobs made billions off of that because of the fact that they, this was another shift that had taken, taken place. And this went on until 1994, but in 1994, there was another shift. This became, became known as the information age. Yeah. From 19, 
and then the fourth to 2003, and those who control the flow of information control the will. This is the invention of Google, yeah. Yeah. Yahoo, yeah. Ask G. Then in 2003, another shift began to take place, and this was the techno info entertainment age. Mm -hmm. If you can make a beat, you can make some money. Yeah. You didn't have to have a whole orchestra at this point in time to make something, but if you can get, because my sons were doing this when they were high school, everybody thought they could make some beats. Mm -hmm. They wanted to be next Russell Simmons. Um, and people began to make money during this period of time. But then it began to be another switch around 2008 and it's back to this point, and it's called the partnership age. It's when companies began to realize that they can now begin to come together and put their products together to make money. Amazon and Apple were the first ones to do it. Everybody remember when Amazon first came about, that's where you want to get your book. Yeah. 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 That's what you use Amazon for. Yeah. Yeah. But then Apple created what was called the apps the app store. Uh -huh. And as they began to pull it together, now you can get those ebooks. You can get all this information just by having the app. So if you get the app, within well, it is in, in uh, conjunction with other companies and begin to make money in this particular way. So what am I talking about today? What I'm talking about is understanding that sometimes there's a shift that takes place. And we oftentimes miss when there's a shift that's going on and we miss our season, we miss our time. The word says in 1 Chronicles of 12, chapter verse 13, it says, And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the time to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their commandment. In other words, because of the fact that they had knowledge, all everybody else followed them because they knew what to do. The word time, it actually could be translated to mean opportunity because they understood the opportunity. They were able to say when we should move and when we shouldn't move, when we should do whatever it should be done, amen? And I'm even to look at our own lives and how many of you had opportunities that may have passed your way and passed you by because you didn't understand the time? That's right, yeah. wow, yeah. Amen. Or how many of us are trying to do something that the time has passed and you still trying to do it? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You still hold to, hold to something that's just, that's just shifted. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. No one is doing that way. No one is doing that. But you're still trying to keep on doing it. And sometimes what we do is we try to hold on to our traditions. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Instead of understanding where we are at a moment in time. Can I suggest to you that we're living in a time where we're seeing a shift that's taking place in our, before our very eyes? Yes. Amen. Yes, it is. Amen. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 There have been a lot of things that have brought about the shift. I, I also want to submit to you that COVID has brought about a shift. That's yes, right. Yes. That's right. Yes. We've gone through this period of time when we were shut down for, for what, two years or so where we were at home and, and, and some of us as pastors, you know, we kept our doors open here. We just kept being nobody with me. We're showing up, amen? amen. And that was Sunday when it was so bad until I would show up in front, of, in front of a camera and my son Ashton and I, and we would just keep on having church. We never did stop having it. But there were others who decided we know we were shut down because somehow we figured that people are always going to be the same even when it's all over. But when we began to come out, we began to realize that people were different than how they were when they went in. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We have a whole economy that is suffering right now because employers can't find enough people to do the jobs. Where are people at? Because people decide, you know what, I can do my job at home. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Once they figure out they can work at home, man, why do I need to show up at your job for? That's right. Amen. Amen. But shift is also taking place in the way that the church operates, in the way that it runs, because now we've got to a place where we figure, you know what, I'm tired of going to deal with them folks anyway. I can just stay at home now. We have to recognize the shift that is taking place, but then here's what we got to do is we got to understand that our God is always in control. Yeah. And if he's in control, but then we got to say, God, what are you doing right now? What are you yeah. speaking right now? Amen. We sometimes miss it because we're holding on to an old vision that he gave us, or an old word that he gave us, instead of finding out, God, what are you saying right now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you, you're missing me. You're missing me. Because when we get to talk about what's happening, this is true in your life right there where you are. Yeah. Whether it's with your a relationship, whether it's with your spouse, yeah. whether it's with your children, what used to work, you got to understand, God, what are you saying for me right now? Yeah. Amen? Amen. Because you know how it is when we get a good thing, we want to just keep holding on to the good thing. Right, right. <gasps> and then we fail to realize that good thing is not flowing the way it used to. Amen. So today I want to talk to you about understanding harvest time. Harvest. If I say harvest time. Harvest time. 
Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you right now for the word that's about to go forward and for those that you're drawing this place to be able to hear and to receive this word. In Jesus' precious name we pray. We thank Amen. you, Lord. Amen. 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 What's the dictionary defines a season as any of the four divisions of, of the year? That's, and it's also described this way, the time where something takes place. And another definition for it is the fitting time. Yeah. Fitting time. Most of what we do in our lives is based or influenced by a fitting time. School operate at a period of time. We know that school's going to start in August, and we also expect it to end in May. Unless you fail something, you'll be going to summer school. Otherwise, when it's time for the end, it's going to end. That's how we operate in, in our school system. We also understand this as far as produce is concerned. Foods are produced at a period of time. There's some food that you can get in the, in the wintertime, but you can't get it in the summertime. And there's some foods you can get in the summertime, but you can't get it in the fall time because there was a certain season to get it. You may crave it all you want to, but you're not going to find it anywhere because you have to be able to get it when it's time for you to get it. Amen. 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 Most of the things that we do is influenced by season. Where we choose to live is influenced by times and seasons. Some of us like living in the south because of the fact that we know that during the winter time we're not going to deal with a lot of snow. Some people rather like move farther north because they know in the summertime here, good Lord. Amen. It's going to be hot. We understand those things. Some people attitudes are different during periods of times of the day. Some of us are more excited and more, more energetic when the sun lasts longer in the summertime than we are in the wintertime because in the wintertime we know it's going to get darker sooner. Right. We are all, all formed by fitting time. Yeah. The word says in Galatians the 6th chapter verse 7 through 9, it says, do not be deceived. God is not law. For whatever man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will, the flesh reap corruption. For he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. I want to read that last verse in, in the message Bible because it reads this way. Do not get tired of doing, doing what is good. Don't get discouraged and give up. For we will reap a harvest of blessing at the appropriate time. Whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those who are the Christians and brothers. Amen? Amen. So when we begin to talk about harvest, the first question I'm going to ask you, what is your harvest? What is it you're expecting to come back to you? For some of us today, it may that we be imagining that we're going to be wealthy. And that's all right, because I believe that God begins to open the door for wealth also. Maybe that's what it is that you're looking for. For others, it may be that you're looking for a family. Maybe you want, if you're unmarried, maybe you want to get married. If you're married, maybe you want to have children. Some of us have different things. For others, it may be that my harvest is once I'm able to own my own property, my own home. Whatever it is, we got to expect that there's a harvest that can come our way. Amen? Amen. Say, a harvest is coming my way. A harvest is coming my way. But here's you got to understand the harvest. First thing about a harvest is that harvest is a consequence of our action. A harvest is a consequence of your action. You will reap whatever you sow. Say with me, I reap, I reap what, I sow. what I sow. So what does that mean? In verse 8 through 9, what he is saying to us is that whatever it is that we put into the ground is what we're going to get out. Amen. That means that if you sow corruption, Ooh, you don't get corruption. That's right. That means if you sow strife, that's right. That means if you sow bitterness, that's what you're going to get that's back. Right. Amen. But if you sow a seed of love, of kindness, and even if you sow an investment, you got to expect that there's going to be a harvest that's going to come back because a harvest is a consequence of whatever action that we have. Amen. Amen. You got to begin to think about it as a seed. You see, you got to put enough seeds into the ground to get what it is that you want back. Amen. 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 Because every seed may not germinate. That's right. Every seed may not take place. So you saying that you know what I want to receive? I've heard Pastor talk about about this harvest. I want to receive love back. So let me just start loving someone. You love one person who mistreats you, and then you get to the point. You know what? I ain't love nobody else. Yeah. No, no, no. You see, the thing is, just because that one didn't take, what you got to do is you got to keep on loving the other one because this one didn't take, but there become a harvest because of all the others that's going to take place. That's right. Amen. Okay, two of you got that. Two of you got that. 
And that's true with every aspect of your life. If you're looking for a harvest of blessing, then you've got to begin to bless other people. Yeah. If you're looking for a harvest of opportunity, then you've got to put yourself in a position for those opportunities to come. If you're looking for healing, it means you've got to do the things that you need to do. Pastor Diane, she's good at this, man. She stays on me because of the fact that she wants me to be healthy. She realized the time I was going through, man, I'm always just feeling, feeling just down and something's wrong. And so now she won't let me eat hardly anything. No sugar, no cold. And sometimes I sneak off just to give me a hamburger. <laughs> Let me see me even lying to y'all. Sometimes I do backslide. <laughs> Amen? But I appreciate that the fact that she's always on me trying to help me to do the right thing. Amen? Amen. And sometimes I'll be acting like a little kid. I'll be looking around for it. I just got me a cake. Where is she? Where is she? Where is she? Because I already know she's going to try and take it away from me. Or I just get a little, little piece of her. But as we begin to do this over a period of time, all of a sudden I begin to find all this. You know what? I feel pretty good. Yeah. You know what? I can walk long and I used to. I don't feel all the aches and pains that I used to feel. Why? Because the fact that there was a harvest that was being put into the ground. And as I began to do the things that I need to do, now I'm starting to receive the harvest of it coming back to me. Somebody's going to catch on the same thing. If you're looking for a gift, it, it doesn't mean that one day I did it, it means I have to keep on doing it. Because I did it one day and I still don't feel the same way. This stuff is not working, but I just kept on doing it. Until eventually you look up one day, here comes the harvest. So whatever it is that you're trying to get the harvest in, you got to stay with it. Yeah. You got to keep at it. If you're trying to get that love back, you got to keep on loving. That's Even for folks who are not lovable, just keep on loving. Keep on treating. And if they don't know how to receive it, go and love somebody else. Find somebody else that you can pour that love into. And you'll watch and see your harvest begin to come back too. Yeah. If it's in your finances, sometimes you can put your money into the wrong thing, into the wrong business. But if your goal is for God to increase me, I got to keep at it. Yes. Just because it fell in one place doesn't mean it's going to fail in every place. Yes. Because my harvest is a consequence of my action. Amen? Amen. Amen. But can I tell you also that you can put your seed into the ground and there'll be a time to your life that you're going to experience a dry season. That's right. There'll be dry season sometime. That means that it wasn't that you put the wrong seed in. It means that you put it into the ground and there was no rain to come to cause it to come up. Can y'all catch what I'm saying to you? Oh, yeah, yeah. And so that's the reason why you have to know how to store up. Yeah. Because there will come times of dryness. Yes. Amen? Amen? Everybody's going to experience, experience a season of dryness when it doesn't seem like it's coming back to you. But you've got to have enough that's stored up. So then when you want to dry this over here, you got enough that's over here. Amen? Amen. That is the exact principle that Joseph came to the Pharaoh and said to him, he says, what you've got to do is, he says, there's a harvest going to come. I mean, there's going to be a dry time that's going to come. It's going to be a drought that's going to take place. And it's going to last for seven years. But here's what you've got to do. You've got to build silos in order to put all the grain in so that when there is no harvest coming in, you still got something to live off of. Amen. Some of you are living off the old things but just keep on doing it. It's the same way in our way of serving God. There are times when you just don't feel like it, but you keep on shouting anyway. Yeah. What you're doing is you're leaning on what God has already done. I know God's going to do something great in, the, in the, uh, my future, but right now I'm in a season of dryness, but I still can praise him because I know what he's already done. And if he's done before, God will do it again. Thank you, Lord. So harvest is a consequence of your action. But the second thing is harvest is also a process. Harvest is a process. The word says, so don't get tired of doing what is good. Don't get discouraged and don't give up. Your harvest don't happen overnight. Come on. It takes time. And Ecclesiastes the 11th chapter verse 1 says, Cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. So unfortunately, for many people, is that we sometimes we look, we come looking for harvest that we didn't prepare for. And what we want to do is we want to help and give one out and hoping that we can get one real, get, get something back real quick. Amen? Amen. Amen? We do that in our service of God. There are times when you go through a, this time in life when things go, get hard on you. Now, praise God, whatever reason you come to the church, whatever reason you, you come, and what we do is we go into a hard time at that moment in time, and we say, you know what, I need, I need to get it right. Let me start going to church. And we show up. Praise God for you. And then you go home and find the devil still there. 
Yeah. 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 No, you, you can't plant the harvest at that moment of time and expect to get it back. Right. Because harvest is a process. Amen. 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 It is a process. Jesus began to give us this illustration. He says it this way in Mark, the fourth chapter, verse 26 to 29. Here's another illustration of what the kingdom of God is like. This is the message Bible. A farmer planted the seed in a field, and then he went on with it with other activities. And as the days went by, the seed sprouted and grew without the farmer's help, because the earth produced crops on its own. First, the leaf blade pushes through, and then the heads of wheat are formed. And finally, the grain ripens, and as soon as the grain is ready, the farmer comes and harvests it with a sickle. In other words, what he is saying is that it took a process to get there. So sometimes we do is we look at other people's lives and we seem like they have this blessing that's going on in their lives and you want what they got, but you don't know what it took for them to get there. Amen. Sometimes people look at your life and know what you got, but they don't know what it took for you. They don't know. They don't know your story. They, they don't look at, they, sometimes they look at your family, your family seems like it's all together. But you don't know what, what hell we've been through. Yeah. Sometimes they look at it and seem like you're driving, nice, you're driving a nice vehicle and you, they, they, don't, they don't know about the time that you didn't have to catch a ride to get to work. Yeah. They, don't, they don't know about those times. All they can see is where you are at this moment in time. That's right. But you understand that harvest was a process because you kept getting up and you kept moving forward. You didn't quit and you didn't give up. I'm going to encourage somebody today, regardless of where you happen to be in life, don't you quit and don't you give up. Because a harvest is not an event, it's a process. That's right. Your whole life is defined, not by one event, but it was defined over a process. So people who are bitter didn't just have one bad, bad relationship with somebody and all of a sudden they became bitter. No, that has happened over a period of time. And after this period of time, here they are. It's so bitter. Why? Because of one thing after the next thing, after the next thing, after the next thing just kept on happening. Yeah. At the same time, you'll find people on the other side of that and you begin to live a whole different life. Why? Because of a process that took place. Yeah. You may even start off bitter, but now you got this joy. Why? Because of the process that you went through. You kept seeing him blessing you over and over and over again. You kept on trusting over and over again. And pretty soon, what you used to be, you're not there anymore. It was a process to get there. So if you're in a place in life and you're trying to overcome something or you're trying to come out of something, you've got to go through the process and get there. Just because you fall down today doesn't mean that it's all over. You've got to get up and keep on trying again. Today is just another day to see what God's going to do in my life. Amen? And the third thing is a harvest is a season. Harvest is a season. A harvest of blessings comes at the appropriate time or the due season. There's a difference between the two Greek words I'm going to give to you, chronos and keros. Chronos means a normal or a general time. It's where we get the word chronological, or it's when something is in chronological order. When one thing happens behind the next thing, behind the next thing. But keros has a different meaning. It means a fixed and a definite time. It means the opportune time. It means the right time. And it also means for a limited period of time. Amen? Amen. You've got people to understand your harvest is a, means that you've got to know when the appropriate time is. And so as I give you the example of all the millionaires and how they were able to make it, what they began to do, they began to understand what was appropriate at that time. They hit it at that moment in time, and then before you know it, it began to pass on. How do you know of certain actors that used to be on TV, and every time you turn around, they were there. They were like, always, oh, like they made every movie. Yeah. And all of a sudden, like, what happened to them? Yeah. Because there was a season for them. That's right. Sometimes we see those people and you see them broke and don't have anything. Why? Because they didn't understand this was just for a season. Yeah. So instead of stacking up what they had, they just kept on spending everything that was coming in. Yeah. Everything was going on. Now they don't have anything. They can't get a job. Amen? Amen. Amen. Why? Because it was your season for a moment in time. That's right. Amen? Amen. How many of you bought Cisco help? Oh, you don't even know what I'm talking about. Amen? Amen. Amen. How, how, many, how many people are out there that you used to get their albums and soldier boy? Okay, I'm going to say, I don't even know what I'm talking about. 
And there's a reason why you don't know what I'm talking about because there was a season for that person and they got to understand their season and before you know it, no one's buying your record anymore. But you made money at that season that was in your life. Amen? Amen. You got to understand that when we talk about carols, it means it's an appointed time. It's an appropriate time. It is a limited time. It may be the time for you to get it. You got to get it that moment of time because the season they pass you and you missed your season. Oh, two of y'all catching me today. Yeah. It's very important if you're going to reap the harvest, you got to know God's timing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So you got to know the timing of the harvest. I have a, before you an illustration of three bananas. Um, the first one is a green banana. And the green banana will represent a season. Now, for the person who cut the banana down at a time that wasn't fully ripe, he did it at the right time, even though the banana wasn't ready. Because all of us will probably have a banana that was still green, and you know it doesn't taste that good. So why in the world would you cut it at a time that it wasn't ready? Well, the reason why they cut it down at a period of time when it's still green is because it's got to travel from one place to the next place. That's right. And so while it's traveling from one place to the next place, it's ripening. So by the time they get to the store, it's ready to be bought. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, some of you are going to catch me because what God has done in some of our life, he cut us down before some of us are ready. God put us up and before people like, I'm not ready for this. God will call you to sing like, I'm not ready for this. God will call you, put you in places with people, and you're like, I'm not ready for this. And you feel like you're, you, you don't know what you're doing in the midst of it. Amen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as far as you're concerned, you feel like you weren't ready for it, but you were cut and put into that position just at the right time. That's right. Why? Because you don't understand that there's, where you're born, there's a destination to get you to where you need to be. In the midst of everything that you're going on, in the midst of that, you know, that moment in time, it's because you're ripening. So that when it's time for you to pull the shelf, you are now ready. Thank you. So now begin to think about in all aspects of your life. In all aspects of your life, you may be called to be a supervisor on the job and you feel like you can't do it. But get in there and begin to do the very best you can. Because in the due season, you're going to be ripening just for the next thing that he has in store for you. This is what he does. He picks us out when we think we're not ready. When we feel like we're the least qualified and when we're not prepared. Because he knows what experiences you've got to go through. That's right. And all those experiences that you're going through is getting you ready yeah. for what's next. Yeah. The banana in the middle is the white banana. We love white bananas. Yeah. These are the best ones that you want to have. But the white banana is a banana that's already gone through the traveling. Yeah. Yeah. And so now when it gets there, now it's ready to be bought. It is ready for consumption. Amen? That's right. It's at its best at this moment in time. And so now it can be used for what it's supposed to be used for because it's the right banana. Amen? Amen. There's a season we all go through to get us prepared for what God is going to use us for. For some of you, maybe just getting started out, you may be the green banana. And for others, you may be walking or you may be adjusting into a different season of your life. Can I also ask you is that there are many things that's taking place all at one time in our life. Yeah. You see, for some people, you may be ripe over here, but in other places in your life, you're green in this area. That's right. That's right. <gasps> You've got to understand where you are at all points of your life. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And just because you're right over here doesn't mean that you're right over here. Right. You've got to adjust to it along the way. Mm -hmm. Then there's the last one, the overwiping banana. Has anybody ever had an old white banana? Yeah. A rotten banana? Yeah. It's not good. <laughs> not good at all. What has happened to this banana? You see, it was cut down when it was green. Yeah. It's traveled from one destination to the next destination. It, it has traveled from the farm all the way to the store. Yeah. But when it get there, it just sit on the shelf and nobody gets it. Yeah. Nobody wants it. And so now, over a period of time, it is trying from being green to ripe to now it's rotten. Can I also suggest that some of us today? Yeah. 
Sometimes what's happening, we just get burned out. Sometimes we sit around and we're just a bitter. Sometimes we sit around and we're offended. And because of the fact that we're that way, we refuse to be used. And so therefore, we just sit on the shelf. And while you just sit on the shelf, what's happening? Don't nobody want to answer that question. When you just sit on the shelf, what's happening? You sit on the shelf, shelf and you just turn and broaden. Until eventually you reach a place where you can't be used. Why? Because if somebody tries to use you now, only thing that's going to come out is the bitterness. Ooh. Only thing that's going to come out there is you're offended by something. Yeah. So I close with this question I ask you which banana are you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, I want to turn to you and let me ask what kind of banana are you? <laughs> Y'all are pondering that question for a moment. <laughs> we need to understand our harvest. And we need to understand that a product of sowing and reaping means that we got to understand the season. You got to understand that you got to put enough seeds into the ground because every seed won't germinate. Everything won't come back. So don't get discouraged because you put one seed in the ground and nothing happened. And so you quit because you said nothing's going to ever come of this. You got to put enough into the ground in order to give that what you believe. Amen? Amen. You got to understand that this is a process of growth. It doesn't happen overnight. Therefore, we need to prepare and we need to enlarge our capacity. So as I told you, from the beginning of time to 1750, in order for you to gain wealth was to own the land. And so the only way they can increase their wealth was to own more land in order to have it. There's got to be a place in my life that we begin to cry, God, increase me. Enlarge my territory. That's what the prayer of Jabez is about. It's about land. Give me more land. It's, and he was talking about natural. He wasn't talking spiritual like we were talking about. He says, enlarge my territory because that's where the wealth comes from. But we may not be thinking about land as we know it. It may be on the inside of us. God, enlarge my territory. Give me more faith. Yes, Lord. Yes. Lord, Lord, help me to depend on you more. Enlarge my territory. Yes. It may be in my relationship with other people. God, begin to enlarge my yes. territory because it is my desire to receive the wealth. Yes. And so if I'm going to receive the wealth, then I need more. So I'm going to trust you, God, for those things in order that I can get a bigger harvest. Amen? Yes, Amen. Amen. Come on and bless the Lord. In our harvest time, a season of harvest, a, a certain period of time, we have to be sensitive to the season and be wise of the time and not miss the opportunity. Yeah. Thank you to the stand right now. It's my season. It's my season. It's my season. <laughs> Say it one time. It's my season. It's my season. And it's my time. And it's my time. And what he's wow. going to do is going to be big. Yes, Lord. Lord. If you believe that, go ahead and bless it. It's going to be big. Let's pray. Father God, we want to thank you right now for this word that's gone forward. For those that have been drawn to this place, for to hear and to receive this word, God. Right now we're praying for the harvest time. That you're in the Lord, our territory. It's my season, it's my time. Now thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do right now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.